I'm Conrad Swift, and this is the Cardano Convo Podcast, a weekly podcast that gives a glimpse into the Cardano ecosystem. The Cardano Convo provides an easy-to-digest explanation of the projects that are being built, thoughts, and what's going on within the Cardano community. Make sure to follow us on Twitter and follow now on your favorite apps like Spotify, iTunes, YouTube, or wherever podcasts are available. Today, I'll be speaking with Chris, founder and project lead of Cardania, an independent ecosystem project for Cardano and Card Game. Without further ado, let's get on to the interview. Hello, Chris. It's nice to have you on the show, and thank you for taking the time to talk with us today and answer a few questions about the work you've been doing with Cardania. Awesome. Thank you, Conward. Well, we're just happy to be here, man. This is great. So, first of all, tell us a little bit about yourself, your background, what drew you to crypto in general? Sure. Um, so, my name is Chris. Uh, I'm the project lead and founder for Cardania. Uh, my skill stack is primarily on the art and web development side. Um, with some game development background, JavaScript, C Sharp, that kind of thing. Um, I'm married. I've got two kiddos. And I've been in the crypto space for some years now. I think uh, since 2013 or 2014 um, was when I finally like dove in pretty deep. Uh, professionally, I was an artillery officer in the Army, uh, as well as a public affairs officer for a little while. And then uh, after I got out, I ran my own little private marketing firm for a while. Uh, had some awesome clients there, uh, a lot of like legal, legal cannabis space stuff. Um, but eventually I wanted to focus on my own projects. Uh, I got a small family farm and I like cryptocurrency generally because I feel like it's a, a big blessing for human you know, self-reliance and sustainability. Um, and I'm just excited to contribute to the world that uh, we're building with it. Nice. Can you give our audience a general or detailed explanation of what is Cardania and what niche this platform will fill? Yeah. Um, so Cardania is ultimately meant to be a virtual world, multi-game sort of interactive ecosystem uh, with different, you know, different experiences throughout. Um, for the moment, the team is focused on the production of a multiplayer card game. Um, that's called Cardania Enter the Ultraverse. Uh, players will find it sort of familiar to Magic the Gathering or Hearthstone. Um, it's crafted in somewhat that vein. Uh, the project is focused on sort of utilizing all the wonderful tech that Cardano has to offer, um, including FTs and smart contracts once they're available. Okay. A lot of applications are being built on Ethereum and other blockchains, so there are a lot of options out there. What made you and your team decide to build it on Cardano? So I spent a lot of time exploring kind of what was out there on Ethereum. <clears throat> Sorry about that. So I spent a lot of time uh, sort of exploring what was out there in Ethereum uh, before I jumped into Cardano. Um, though, you know, I, I've been following Cardano since, since it's, uh, I think they did that Japanese ICO. Um, uh, you know, it looked really promising. And I, I, had, tried to, I had tried to do stuff on, uh, on Ethereum, um, you know, with OpenSea. Um, I, I, I you know, attempted to play a couple games and like every single time it was a bad experience or it just didn't work right. It was buggy. The fees were crazy. The transactions were slow. And so it was just like, okay, this is obviously like, it's, you know, some people got it to work and that's great for them. But I, I think most people had a similar experience to me. So I was like, okay, I think Cardano is where it's at. Let's just, you know, uh, plant our flag here. And, and frankly, even without smart contracts. I think Cardano is just more usable. Um, and once contracts are released, like we're going to be able to do so many things. It'd be amazing. Um, so, you know, I've, I've always loved the development ethos of Cardano. And I feel from an architectural standpoint that this is sort of the chain that's going to end up preferred among game developers. Okay. So I know you touched on it a little bit before, but where did Cardania get its inspiration from? I've looked at one of your videos and the cards look a bit, as you said, Hearthstone-esque, but the play to earn method reminds me of Gods Unchained on the Ethereum blockchain. Also, I read the lore section in, of your website and it gave me Warhammer 40k vibes. So I'm just curious of what inspired Cardania. Yeah. Uh, so all those things, actually, no, you're, you're right on the money. Um, so I've been a lifelong gamer myself. Um, so I've drawn inspiration from like a number of places. Um, the play to earn model is definitely, you know, it's being pioneered on Ethereum with games like Gods Unchained and Decentraland and all that. Um, 
And, you know, that's what we're aiming to do here. But I also do enjoy the artistry of Warhammer, uh, though Cardania's vibe is a little different, right? It's going to be a little less grimdark, a little bit more, a little bit more uh, fun, a little quirky. Um, I enjoy the gameplay of Hearthstone. Um, and, you know, Blizzard does a great job with any, any of its games. Um, oh, offhand, of I'd say there's inspiration also from this. There's a couple of obscure games that I've, I've drawn some inspiration from. So uh, there's one that's called Torment Tides of Numenara. Um, again, it's on Steam. Uh, it's a relatively like esoteric, uh, it's an isometric RPG, um, somewhat like Baldur's Gate. Really great game. Uh, some of the lore I actually drew some direct parallels with where you know, they set their setting way, way, way in the future, like so far that it's, you know, there, there's been dozens of civilizations that have fall, risen and fallen in a specific area um, to the point that, you know, nobody can even remember, uh, you know, what, what like Earth of R, R you would, would have been like. So I did something similar to that with our lore. Um, other, let's see, other inspirations. I'd say Stellaris to a degree. I really like Stellaris. Yeah. Um, and then the vibe. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if you've played it. It's an amazing game. Um, and then from other just media, I'd say the vibe is also uh, sort of on like He-Man Masters of the Universe um, and maybe even uh, Thor Ragnarok. It's also sort of an early inspiration. So I just like, uh, there's something about the sort of sci-fi, high fantasy, sort of like cheeky heroism and adventure type stuff that I just, I kind of dig that. So, uh, but I am trying to give a unique vibe to each of the factions. Um, so like the Solar Barbarians, for instance, they're, for instance, they're going to be more of like a, like Frank Frazetta as an artist. I'm, I'm studying closely with that. Uh, it's very, you know, like, you know, ripped, masculine, bloody, that kind of thing. Uh, whereas, you know, the techno mages, um, I think, will probably adhere to more of a familiar Warhammer vibe. So, more probably like yeah, a researchy yeah, it's vibe. A, it's a little bit of a mishmash. Yeah, yeah, very like that. Okay. Um, what were some hurdles that Cardania as a project had to overcome, something I'd imagine to be difficult would be programming card packs. Yeah, uh, you know, the technical side has actually been relatively fluid. Um, the biggest hurdle for sure so far has been the regulatory side. Um, it's just been an ongoing difficulty, because, but we are making some progress there. Um, we've got our in-game currency called the, the RAD token. Um, it's already minted. It's on the chain. Um, we could do a crowd sale today if we if we really wanted to, but um, we're working through just sort of regulatory options there. Um, and it's it's just a minefield. So we're taking our time to do it right the first time because once we do it, you know, you, there's like there's no take backs, right? Mm -hmm. um, and eventually, either the SEC, either the SEC will bless you or they will curse you <laughs> based on how you did it. So. We're really, you know, I, I really, I'm talking to several lawyers. I'm trying to uh, figure out what the best, you know, business structure for that that is because we had, we actually had the tokens minted before everything else. And I was like, oh, we can just do it, and I was like, okay, wait, time out. You know, we we have to be very careful with this. So um, that's the most challenging piece currently on the on the development side. Um, I'd say the first major hurdle was sort of the automated NFT sales. Um, our lead on that side uh, is he's a Plutus pioneer. His name's Jonathan Fishbane. Uh, he's just super talented and he just crushes all these things. Um, it's awesome to work with him. Um, and then, you know, the, and the packs that you mentioned, the, the, the pack uh, redemption feature. So those won't be redeemable till September or so is, is what the, the aim date is. But uh, that's actually a relatively simple uh, token swap contract, right? So you get, you know, you're getting the packs today and they'll have a specific policy ID over to a wallet containing, you know, a, a ton of cards, fix of those. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, you know, regulatory challenges, minor technical challenges, and uh, you know, production's always a challenge because we're making, you know, we're making art for just a, a ton of cards right now, so. Oh yeah, yeah. and I've, with a lot of projects, I, projects, I've heard it's a lot of, as you said, regulatory because, especially in the, U, the USA, they look at it as like four or five different things. So you're just, Again, as you said, you could just do it, but then you don't want the SEC coming back three years later, like to do an XRP style event again. Like you don't want that. No one wants that. So completely understandable. Yeah. <laughs> no, it is. It, it's, it, it's crazy, man. It's fully crazy, but we're, we're working through it and we'll get there. Uh, you know, all things in due time, but we're taking a really 
just you know we're taking a, a zen approach to it and uh you know we'll get there when we get there so oh yeah but the next question i have is about nfts which we all know are quite popular right now i know that mm -hmm. cardania is planning for cards that are usable within the game to be nfts with their own metadata but will cardania have other forms of nfts for the game such as battlefields pets or various avatars Yes, uh, I'd say it's likely that you're going to see some variations of all that. Uh, the development of all those things kind of take their own, their own little bit of time. Um, if you look in our roadmap on the website, we do have evolution cards and quantum cards outlined for later this fall. Um, so the evolution cards will be uh, you know, basically tokens that can gain you know, XP over time, right? So you win a game and then over time it's being tracked by a contract that you know, that card could you know level up into it basically a new token over time um, and those are those are gonna be called evolution cards and then we're also gonna have um quantum cards which are something similar to like you know you see the, the one one avatar series um in a lot of different projects now mm -hmm. um they have you know the slight variations on the little things yeah um, and those those are cool you know they're, they're cool and we're we're gonna do something similar to that too we're gonna call those quantum cards um because you know everybody likes to have their own very specifically unique uh thing so um, you'll see both of those um, as we as we roll out. I, I would suspect late fall for both, um, but yeah, for sure. And then you know, ideally, you'll be able to utilize our NFTs across sort of the multiple games, right? So the other big sort of pillar of what we want to develop is the virtual game world. Um, so ideally, you know, maybe your founder's card gives you a boost in the card game. Uh, it also gives you a chance for early uh, early drops. By the way, if you get one of those. Um, but let's say that also unlocks a specific type of like land deed in the virtual world, right? Maybe your blue founders card unlocks one that's in more of a watery uh, biome or something like that. Uh, I mean, that's the great thing about NFTs, right? You can, the metadata lives independently of the game and the game's just calling that data. Um, yeah. So that's sort of a, a beautiful thing that we're, we're building around. I know that we all have been having to wait for the Cardano Foundation to release smart contracts on the main net. But do you have an estimate of when investors, gamers, and the Cardano community can look forward to playing Cardania? Yes. So my official answer until it's released will always be when it's ready. Uh, but I, I think realistically we'll have an alpha version by the late fall. Um, but the production of the cards is probably the largest task. Um, and I, you know, I also want to make sure that we're delivering a fun, like polished product because you know, I, I can deliver kind of a crappy card game early or, you know, zen through it, finish it right, mm -hmm. <laughs> make it good. Yeah. So uh, you know, when it's done, uh, it'll be released when it's done. But, you know, um, I, do, I do think uh, late fall or early winter, we're going to have something uh, enjoyable to play. Okay. Oh, I know the big thing for a lot of projects, it seems, is it's on Cardano Foundation's time because for a lot of them, like, for example, whether it be a card game or a DEX, you can have, you could have the product, let's say, ready tomorrow, but until smart contracts are out, it's not very useful until you can release it then. So I know your guys, you guys right. and all, a lot of other projects are having this issue. So I, the answer of it's ready when it's ready is I would... I'm sure many people who are watching this will understand or who are listening will understand you'd rather have a good product than have a rushed out terrible product like similar with a cryptocurrency like Cardano style you want it to take its time get a good product release it and not have to That's run right. in there all Silicon Valley style break things and patch it up as you go so I think everyone can appreciate that right. for sure. I don't want I don't want a no man's sky situation, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I don't want you know, I've seen so many it's got I that and that's just that's like a gaming that's like a gaming culture thing right now. It's like nobody wants to do the pre-orders and stuff anymore because these games they promise the moon and then you know they deliver kind of a, a turd. So trying to avoid that reality as much oh, as yeah. Can. With pre-orders, it used to, like, the method was phenomenal because it would help for people who wouldn't have the money originally to make the game to make the game, yeah. but then it became almost scammy and, like, here, we're going to sell you a story, you buy it, yeah. and they're like, well, we've already got the money, so let's, there's no need to, like, make a phenomenal product. And it's like, well, yeah, yeah. but <laughs> pulling from the previous question, I like that your roadmap is highly detailed. 
How well has your team kept up with the roadmap in terms of delivering new features? Sure. Uh, so I, our team has been really just great about production. Um, the only one that we've missed, I think, on the roadmap so far is the Rad Token sale. And, and you know, like we, we talked about earlier, it's not really a technical thing. We could do, yeah. do the sale today. Um, so I'm super happy with the progress so far. Um, you know, we, we've got our second unopened pack deploying today. Uh, that one's Cleansing Fire. And um, we've got about, let's see, that's our second one. We've got, I think, five more are going to be dropped over the coming weeks. And um, other than that, it's really all about card production and, and engine production. Um, and the only, the only one that I think on the roadmap is going to be tough is figuring out, you know, I'm really spending a lot of brain power trying to figure out how we want to do the virtual land uh, mechanic. Because um, I actually, you know, some of the ones that I've seen, they sort of start, you know, you start in this 2D space and people can buy, you know, they can buy stuff and, and you know, maybe put a, a GIF or an image on it, uh, you know, customize, limited customization option. And I don't, I don't know, you know, maybe we want to start with that sort of 2D thing, um, but I don't, I don't know. It's because it's not, I don't know, it's not cool to me. Yeah. <laughs> so I just want to, uh, you know, we're still, I'm still noodling that out and that may, that may get pushed to the right a little bit. Um, but you know, there a lot of this is how we a lot of this is uh, architecturally like how we think about it, and then sometimes we stumble on a really smart way to do it. So there could be a lot of progress there in a short amount of time if we, you know, if we think about it the right way. But um, so I'd say you know on the card game side, super happy with everything. On the uh, the stake pool side, super happy with everything. Um, you know, the the only thing I think that's going to be a little slow right now is the the land stuff. But that's okay. You know, we got to we got to focus down and, and, you know, get stuff done in one area and then we can visit the other areas as we go. Um, and, you know, the Cardano Foundation, with, with what they're working on, um, it hasn't really set us back because I've, I've definitely, on, on the roadmap, roadmap specifically, all the things that require smart contracts, I've, I've pushed way back towards the fall. Um, so that hasn't really affected us uh, too much yet. And, you know, that, that may shift over the coming months. But, um, no, I'm, I'm pretty happy with progress so far. One other strategy game based on the Cardano blockchain is the Occulta Novelia game. It's really fantastic to see so many game enthusiasts come together and come up with fun ways to integrate crypto and NFTs. We know that Occulta Novelia is a strategy board game, but how would Cardania distinguish itself from other card games? Um, I generally, so I don't, I don't know much about that one that you've mentioned um, specifically, but um, as far as like what we're building, um, I don't. I don't necessarily worry too much about like novelty. Um, I do worry about about building like uh, an enjoyable, like cultivating an enjoyable experience, right? Yeah. Um, so I'm mostly just focused on on that, and I hope we attract people that resonate with that. Um, you know, we're already in such an esoteric space that I don't like, I, I don't know. It, it feels weird to focus more on, um, on the sort of novelty things. I'm like, God, we're already in crypto. We're already in Cardano. We're already doing NFTs. So yeah. <laughs> we're down to like maybe, you know, 10,000 people that, that even understand what we're doing at this point. Um, so, you know, I'm just hoping it's, a, it's fun. That's, that's my, my biggest vision for it. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> um, so Kind of pulling a little bit from the previous, how would you pitch Cardania to someone who is new to strategy games, say someone who isn't well versed in Magic or Hearthstone, but is keen on investing in NFTs from promising projects? Okay, so like pitching it to an investor, um, I would say first to be careful. Uh, don't invest in Magic internet cards with the hope of gaining massive riches. Um, but Fair to enough. borrow, so I, I saw this phrase. I saw this phrase on Twitter, and I, I wish I could. I wish I knew who I attributed it to, but I don't remember who said it. They said, uh, "When learning to identify good NFT projects, uh, learn how to identify puppies with big paws. Uh, so look for projects that have sort of carved out room to grow, and then imagine where they might be. You know, three, five years from now. So you know, I, ideally, Cardania five years from now." will be the best virtual world on the blockchain, right? Or the yeah. most played card game. Um, and nobody knows, uh, but I'd say look, you know, look for signs of, similar with cryptocurrency, look for good teams um, that are, you know, hitting their, 
hitting their uh, their dates and you know with ambitious goals but also you know realistic goals um yeah okay now i'm going to ask you some game related questions so our audience can get to know a bit more about you now that we've heard a bit about cardania or what is the first video game you ever played uh it was called the lost vikings uh it was i think it's actually i think it's a blizzard property um i think it's one of their first games and it was on uh sega genesis um it's actually one of my 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 best memories because i've played that great (laughs) that's awesome i've never even heard of that game yeah that's awesome it's super you you know what in yeah it is a blizzard property because i remember when i played wow for a while and you there's a, a certain part of the game you you'll find the lost vikings sitting around a campfire um i don't think i don't think blizzard's done anything with them um since that game but uh yeah lost vikings great game man okay what was your first console you ever owned was it the sega genesis I think it was the sega genesis okay i think it was um what is your favorite game genre uh, i think the one i've sunk the most hours into is probably grand strategy uh this really mood dependent though right it's like grand strategy rpgs or shooters um and you know mmos hold a special place in my heart as well um but i'm a dad now so i can't i can't sink that many hours into such things but uh yeah grand strategy rpgs or shooters yeah mmos can are huge time sinks i've when my brother's like hey you want to check out this mmo i go i don't have the time for that because <laughs> you know yes, yeah what is your favorite physical trading card game? Hmm. My favorite, yeah. So physical, I don't think there's much trading in it, but there's one that my family and I play, we really like, it's called Smash Up. Um, yeah, not much trading there, but it's a really good card game. Uh, they have, um, I just described the mechanics real quick, you know, sim- similar to what we're doing with all these different factions, they've, they've put together a mishmash of different things that's right like some are some are almost like star wars you know ip some are just you know strip robots or zombies some some are just very silly like like cheaps right um yeah. and then you know you build a deck based on those um putting those together and so I, we really enjoy that um and actually I've, I've probably drawn quite a bit of inspiration for for what we're doing from that game um way back in the day though i really enjoyed um Marvel and DC were doing these little these little runs of uh, they were like comic book cards back in the day, and this would have been I guess late '90s or something like that. And those were super neat because you know you could open a pack up and you'd get you know all your favorite characters and you put them in your sleeves and collect them and stuff like that. Nice. Let's see, what is your favorite virtual trading card game? It probably Hearthstone. It has been a few years since I've sunk much time into it. But Hearthstone was a a great you know gameplay experience. Oh yeah, there's just the amount of things you can do and play styles available. It's phenomenal. Yeah, yeah. What is your now that we're on Hearthstone? What is your favorite class in Hearthstone? Ooh, I've always been a warlock fan. Um, I, I enjoy sort of that the healing and health sacrifice kind of trade offs, um, and I always enjoyed playing. Warlock in, in World of Warcraft. So, like when I started playing Hearthstone, I was like, "Oh yeah, I'm do a warlock." I, so I, I got I got okay with that one. Um, so yeah, warlock. I like, I like warlock. Okay, what is your least favorite class in Hearthstone? Uh, man, I feel like I never won a game with the rogue class. I don't know if I just didn't get it. <laughs> <laughs> I just couldn't do it. Uh, I I need to dip my toe back in and find out. And find out what the play style is like these days because it's been a little while. But rogue, rogue was terrible. <laughs> Understandable. Um, what is your favorite Hearthstone card or card art? Um, you know, I always love uh, Arthas, the Lich King. Any, basically, any Blizzard art around him, I always found just super compelling. I think it, it probably goes back to I'm, I'm fanboying for a fictional character right now, but. Um, it kind of goes back to that old Lich King cinematic. Do you remember when they, they revealed that one? Yeah. Uh, oh man, that was good stuff. Yeah, I think Arthas. Uh, he was he's great in uh, Stone as well. Okay. 
Um, now for some magic questions. What is your favorite format of magic or Magic the Gathering? So just regular arena. Um, I'm sure there's other ones, but I think that is the only one that I ever, ever really played is arena. Okay. Um, what is your favorite play style? So I, I think my favorite when I was playing was probably that sort of plus one stacking game. I think it was the white and black color combination where you'd get, was, I think it was the vampires specifically, yeah. um, where, where you'd start, you'd really start snowballing, uh, you know, plus ones on your, uh, on your cards and it just became it just became impossible to deal with is that um, the yeah. one where when you gain life you get like plus one plus one so you get bigger as you gain more life type yeah of thing? yeah it was like any you know if you took damage or if you did some damage then you'd gain plus one or if you summoned a card plus one and it just, it just became ridiculous pretty quick yeah it was a lot of fun okay um, do you have any other gaming hobbies that the audience might not know about? Uh, yeah, actually. So uh, my kids have been super into Minecraft and Minecraft Dungeons. So by proxy, I am super into Minecraft and Minecraft <laughs> Dungeons. Um, specifically, uh, there's a couple really interesting ones I, I bet most people don't know about. So there's, um, it's, it's basically a Pokemon game layered onto minecraft it's called pixelmon pixelmon yeah um, and there's a few servers you can get in with that yeah and they just love that man and um the other one with minecraft is also a it's a it's a version of, of minecraft it's called bed wars it's like a little mod um and so there, there's a youtuber i think his name his name's unspeakable uh, and my kids love so we play on his server a lot he's got he got bed wars on there and then uh the pixelmon server i think is also on his as well there's like a bunch of weird stuff you have to do to get it installed and working right, but it's it's a lot of fun. It's a good time. Yeah. Um on the topic of Pixelmon, are you so are you more of a Pokemon fan or a Digimon fan? Pokemon. I think I've I think I've just ignored Digimon my whole life for whatever reason. Sorry, Digimon. <laughs> I don't know I'm anything the about same, them. I'm in the exact same boat. <laughs> um what uh, is your favorite yeah. Pokemon? The and this is recent because I didn't I didn't know much Pokemon growing up, but with my kids playing, so they found a uh, a Magikarp recently, and they tried they tried to fight him, but Magikarp's this one Pokemon. It's like he doesn't do anything unless uh, you have to you have to evolve him to turn him into I think it's a Gyarados. Yeah. Um, but I enjoy this sort of dynamic of like getting this getting this Pokemon that can't attack or do anything until you until you evolve. He's just this fish that kind of lays there. Oh, yeah. Um, so I'd say Magikarp. Magikarp is my favorite. He's a delight yeah. knowing, like, only Splash. You have to get him to level 20 before he's useful. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, my ki my kids were like, what is, what are we, what's happening? <laughs> I don't know. Um, anyway, that was pretty great. I love that. <laughs> okay, and the last one is, what is your favorite fantasy world in either gaming or tabletop RPGs? Lot, rock solid answer for this one. It's uh, it's the Sword Coast in the Forgotten Realms, um, and specifically, I would say Baldur's Gate Two, Shadows of Om, um, possibly the greatest game of all time. Uh, if you haven't played it, get it and get the expansion pack. It's a uh, Throne of Ball, I think it's called. Yeah, Throne of Ball. Uh, amazing, amazing world, incredible world crafting uh, stories. You know, amazing get it for sure if i cost like five bucks now it's ancient <laughs> <laughs> okay this has been super informative and i really appreciate you taking the time to chat today um before we go how can listeners get involved with what you're doing or how can people best support you and your team yeah there's there's lots of ways so follow us on social media for sure if you're a cardano uh investor um stake with summon s-u-m-n uh, you will get early drops. Um, all of our all of our delegators have a chance to win early drops of our, our packs, our cards, um, tokens, all that stuff. Um, get a founder's card. There's a total of ten thousand. I know it seems like a lot, but uh, give it a couple years. Uh, those will be super rare. Um, get our unopened packs. They're dropping all the time. And um, yeah, come hang out in the Discord too. That's pretty. That's a pretty good vibe. We're cultivating in there. So, any of those would be helpful, and we, you know, we appreciate all the support. So, 
And of course, we will have all these as well in the description and below our images. So that's something to keep in mind. So it make it really easy for you guys. But I want awesome. to thank you once again for taking the time to talk with us today. And again, all the links and information will be down below. Very cool. Hey, thank you, Conrad. I appreciate you. And thank you to the uh, whole Cardano community. Oh, no problem. Again, I'm happy to have you on here. It was a great experience to get to learn a lot about your project. That was great, man. Anytime. Thank you for joining us for this episode of the Cardano Convo podcast. If you want an easy way to help us out, make sure to share this podcast. That way we can grow and create a better podcast for you guys. Also, leave us a five-star review, and if you have feedback on today's episode, tweet us at Cardano Convo or send your emails to cardanoconvo at gmail.com. We'd love to hear from you. We'd also like to thank our two sponsors. First are our Patreons. Their direct contributions help to make this podcast possible. Through our Patreon, we hold polls to decide who we should interview next, exclusive content, early access to episodes and videos, and so much more. Our second sponsor is Loops Pool. If you want to help out the podcast and are looking for a Cardano stake pool to delegate your ADA to, then think about delegating with Loops Pool. That is Loops, L-O-O-P-S. Again, thank you for joining us, and we'll see you in the next episode of the Cardano Convo.